Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Mirror Dungeon solo video. Today we'll be using one of the first Walpurgis identities, Hook Office Hong Lu. He serves as a hybrid haste lead identity and is pretty good at both of those. Most of his conditionals are dependent on his speed, requiring him to roll at least a 6 to reach his maximum potential. At base, this can prove a little difficult with his speed range being 3 to 7, but with his skill 2 providing 2 haste whenever he uses one, it becomes a lot easier for him to achieve this with his new speed range becoming 5 to 9. When it comes to bleed, I would consider him to be one of the best bleed identities. His skill 1 provides a little bleed count, but his true strength when it comes to bleed lies within his skill 2. This can give up to 4 bleed count depending on how fast he is compared to the enemy. Because it's tied to an RNG mechanic, it won't be the most reliable thing in the world unless you've already used another skill 2 the turn prior. But with how most enemies are naturally slower, you're more likely to get good value out of it than not. Other than that though, the last thing worth mentioning is that a skill 3 can be an absolute powerhouse when it comes to pure raw damage. It doesn't have the highest roll, but being a 4 coin skill and having the potential to do 50% extra damage against enemies with broken parts, it can easily end up doing rip space levels of damage. Starting the runoff, we take Wound Claret and Little and Tubi Naughty Plushie for our starting gifts and choose the Forgotten for the first floor. For this boss, we're up against G Corp, and honestly, it's pretty simple. The reason for this is the single best sin type a solo identity can have is Lust. This is because it's required to fuel the best healing support passives in the game of both Barber Otis and Chef Ryoshu. Those two support passives are enough to make it so you never have to worry about any damage you take and can cruise through the mirror dungeon with little issue. We take the grimy iron stake for our reward and head into the unconfronting for the next floor. Here we buy blue zippo lighter, eclipse of scarlet moths, and imposed weight. This entire floor was honestly a massive struggle, but the hardest encounter was easily an elite fight I was forced into. There were three major reasons this floor was such a problem. First was obviously having a blunt weakness and Encorp's debuffs always make it a challenge. The second is that Hong Lu doesn't actually have very many good egos. His best one is probably Dimension Shredder, which only has 3 attack weight and doesn't do a whole lot of damage, so it's difficult to actually end up staggering any enemies. And the third and final problem of the whole run is the Ego Gift Imposed Weight. Now, don't get me wrong, Imposed Weight is a fantastic Ego Gift, and you pretty much always want to take it when you're doing a solo run, but getting it so early is what really makes it a problem. Without having any healing ego gift, the constant chip damage that it does is pretty much permanent and makes stalling to heal completely impossible. I had to start most encounters with near 50% health because of it. Both of the previously mentioned support passives do a lot to help alleviate this, but not nearly enough. For the elite fight itself, the only saving grace we had was the fact that it was more of a debuff focus than bleed, as otherwise it would likely be impossible. Quite literally, the only way out of it was to Ego Spam. Not necessarily for the damage, mind you, but for the targeting. Both Dimension Shredder and the corroded version of Rosiette Desire target the unit at the back, giving us a much needed ability to clash more frequently, especially with all the bind they keep applying. Of course, even this is not enough and we do end up dying, but Dimension Shredder saves our ass, allowing us to barely scrape by this honestly horrible matchup. <laughs> Let's go. 
I stalled as much as I could to heal for that fight, and immediately after, we are met with the boss against Cromer. Normally in this fight, you want to spam Corroded Egos to force Corrosion on the third turn, but unfortunately, I healed just a tiny bit too much in the previous fight, and I'm only three hit points away from getting staggered. This forces me to evade on the first turn. It's not necessarily bad, but it does make the margin for error on the second turn incredibly slim. Essentially, I can only clash with one of Cromer's skills. Otherwise, I would end up gaining too much sanity and end up not corroding on the third turn. Luckily, this does play out in my favor, and we can knock Cromer into her second phase relatively easily. Her second phase is always easier than the first, and we can get through it quickly by one-sided attacking and staggering her before she can actually do anything. We take Squalidity for our reward and head into Slicers and Dicers for the next floor. Here we fuse Respite and find Special Contract before making it to the boss against Bamboo Hatted Kim. This guy is always terrifying, even for evade identities. The sheer amount of bleed he can inflict plus my fear of the 5% forces me to use a minimum of 2 evades every turn. This gives him enough time to not only kill our bleed stack incredibly quickly thanks to the sheer amount of coins he possesses, but also lets him attempt to claim our bones. We are unable to beat it without using an ego, and with it being in his rightmost slot means we always clash with it last. The only thing this really affects is our ability to evade as it brings our odds down to 70% instead of 95, and of course I miss it instantly. Luckily, Kim only rolls heads, allowing us to barely avoid getting staggered, where we can follow up by staggering him in turn and take him down.
We take Rusted Cutting Knife for a reward and head into a certain world for the next floor. Here we buy Bloody Gadget and Lithograph before making it to yet another difficult encounter against the dead rabbits. Normally these guys are a pain due to the sheer amount of rupture they can inflict, and while that is an issue, the real problem is the fact that they have Wrath and Blunt skills, something we are doubly fatal to. Every single one of our egos is fatal to Wrath damage, so we literally cannot turn that off. The only way out of this fight is to get incredibly lucky with them only using their single coin skills and rolling tails every time. Despite them being fatal to gloom damage, Honglu's base ego is not enough to stagger them and it takes a second turn of getting incredibly lucky with targeting to make it out alive. On the third turn, everyone is staggered except for one rabbit, but with him having the most health, as he was never attacked, Dimension Shredder's corrosion will always clash with him, allowing us to make it through by sheer luck alone. Afterwards, we fuse Redstain Gossipium and head into the boss against Nelly. Nelly is a much easier fight than the dead rabbits. We can dodge pretty much everything and, through the power of bleed, can push her to her stagger bar before she can do her main gimmick. Special Contract helps by chunking her and we can finish her off shortly after. We take Arrested Him for our reward and head into Sinking Deluge for the final floor. Here we buy Late Bloomer's Tattoo, Grey Coat, and an extra skill 3, while also finding Painkillers before making it to the final boss against the Brazen Bull. If you thought any of the previous fights were difficult, you ain't seen nothing yet. The Bull is designed exclusively to kill Hook Hong Lu. Just like with the Dead Rabbits, most of his skills are Blunt and Wrath. But unlike them, every single skill is pretty much capable of one-shotting us. This forces us to dodge every one of his attacks, but if that wasn't bad enough, all of his skills are capable of beating our evade. Yet again, we have a fight in which success entirely hinges on pure luck alone. In fact, this entire run was so luck-dependent that it's shocking I'm not using Ting Tang Hong Lu. Anyway, back to the fight itself. The only reason I was capable of winning is entirely thanks to two Ego Gifts. Specifically, the two Ego Gifts we literally just picked up. Grey Coat and Painkillers. My luck fails me on the first turn as the bull beats our evade and staggers us, but Painkillers comes in absolute clutch and proves why it's the best ego gift in the entire game, allowing us to survive the stagger. Afterwards, we are incapable of dodging anything anymore and can only win clashes by using egos thanks to our sanity being tanked by the bull. This works in our favor though, as by ego spamming, Grey Coat gives us just enough health in order to survive another attack. After this, we ego spam a bit more, but not enough, as we end up losing a clash with one of our regular skills when we're at negative sanity and end up dying, but are bailed out by Dimension Shredder's passive once again. With Dimension Shredder's passive activated, there is literally zero margin for error anymore, and so for one last final turn, I ego spam yet again. The sanity drain is less of a problem this time, as Honglu's skill 3 does possess sanity regeneration, and so the rest of the fight we can actually clash with the bull and win the fight.
And that's how I soloed Mirror Dungeon 4 hard using only Hook Lu. This run had no right being as difficult as it did. Who knew that an early imposed weight plus a permanent wrath fatality would be such a problem? I never thought in a million years I would struggle with an evade identity, but here we are. Hong Lu himself is pretty good though, especially for a bleed identity. Not having Rosiette Desire would have changed things. I don't know why I decided to run that. Wait, that was a mistake. Anyway, that's it from me. Like and subscribe to not miss next time where we'll be using this character. Goodbye.